I am not a not theorist, um, so bear with me. Uh, and I am going to talk about Rogers Ramanujan identities. These are identities related to integer partitions. I have been forgetting to give the references to Abhijit, so if you want to learn about partitions, this is a book by George Andrews, which is uh, almost a Bible in this uh, subject. Last year, there is this book that came out by um, Drew Sills. It's called An Invitation to the Rogers Ramanujan Identities. You can think of this book as sort of a extended survey of these identities. And tomorrow, so today I'll talk about what these identities are and the basics about it and their relations to representation theory and tensor categories. Tomorrow I'll focus on their, as their asymptotics and for that I'll use this fantastic survey by Don Zagier on uh, dialogue arithm function. All right, so if there are any questions, please ask. Uh, all right. So as I said, uh, these identities are about integer partitions. So what are integer partitions? Well, take any number, positive, and write it as addition of other positive numbers. Order doesn't matter. so. Pick a convention, maybe write it in always ascending order or something. And this is a partition. Okay? Each of these things is called a part of that partition. Okay. So one thing that you do in combinatorics is to look at what are called generating functions. So for each integer, so by the way, by convention, 0 has only one partition. It's called the null partition. Okay? It's a convention. It just has one partition. So for every integer, find out how many partitions there are, multiply by a formal variable. It's typically q, which is the reason why things are called q series, and find out what this is. Okay? Just figure it out. Turns out that this has a very nice formula, something like this. So what does it mean? And why this is the case. So first of all, q is a formal variable. There is no convergence going on right now, at least. We'll talk about convergence later. So how do I understand this? Okay. This is an infinite product. Each of these is supposed to be expanded as a geometric series. Okay. So for example, let's write down the first few. So first is 1 over 1 minus q, which is 1 plus q plus q square plus dot dot dot. Next is 1 over 1 minus q square, which you expand as something like this. Yeah, go on. And keep going. Okay. So how why does this infinite product make sense? What you should do is Take a fixed power of q, pick any favorite number, q to the 15, and figure out how many ways can you multiply these brackets together to get q to the 15. For example, if I look at 9, then I can pick 1 power of q, 2 powers of q, sorry, 1 power of q squared, and 2 powers of q cubed. This gives me a q to the 9, and that is one partition. Okay. So all possible ways of getting q to the 9 will give you all possible partitions here. The only convention is multiplying 1 infinitely many times is just 1. Okay. All right, so let's practice more. So another example. So look at something like this and expand it. What do you think are the coefficients counting here? expand it, just truncate it up to 3. Okay? So it will count partitions. It is a generating function of partitions where the largest part is at most 3. Right? Because I am only allowed to use 1, 2, and 3. So the largest part is at least at most 3. So now take any partition that has largest part at most 3. 3, for example, the one there, I can also draw pictures. These are easy kind. Okay. 
So write it as a Ferrer's diagram, okay, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 3 and transpose it. Uh, I have made a mistake. So this is not 4, this is 3, so I cannot draw pictures. Okay. All right. Let us transpose it. What do you get? This is 4 plus 3 plus 1. And do it in your mind. If you are using the largest part at most 3, when you transpose it, you will get partitions into, uh, you will get partitions with at most 3 parts. Okay? So here the largest part is 3 less than or equal to. You can take, you can truncate it here and then you will see what happens. So these are in bijection. Okay. All right. So I will use this idea later. So you can play around with this, figure out various generating functions and see what they count. So now let us come to what are Rogers from Ramanujan identities. It is a pair of identities. The first one says that take any, okay, n is a positive integer. You can take it to be 0, that is fine. Um, it is the number of partitions of n where this is the key thing, adjacent parts differ by at least 2 is the same as the number of partitions of the same number where each part is congruent to plus or minus 1 mod 5. I will give an example. Okay. So, these are somewhat mysterious at the first go. There is, there is no 5 on the left hand side. Why is there a 5 on the right hand side? Okay. This is one of the many interesting things about. Right. So, let us take an example. What do I mean by that? Let us take our favorite integer. Let us write down, this has only one part, this partition, so there is no talk about adjacent parts. This has adjacent parts and they differ by 7 and I require adjacent parts to differ by at least 2, so this is good. All right? That is good. This is good. But something like, okay, I will write down the good partitions here. Okay, Every time you pick any two adjacent parts, they differ by at least two. Something like 4 plus 5 is not allowed because they differ by only one. Okay, And on the other hand, write down all the partitions where each part is congruent to either 1 or 4 mod 5. So that is good. Okay, That is good. This is congruent to 1 mod 5 or you can write a bunch of 1s and then a 4 or a bunch of 1s. Okay? 9 at random, so this should work for any positive integer. Right. Okay, so there are 5 here, 5 here, 5 equals 5. Right? Any questions? Yeah. Also, so you don't allow, the change really means you are not allow doubles, like you are not allow that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So something like 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 3 is also not allowed. This is an offense. Okay. 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 Yeah. That's a foul. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Now I said there is another identity. So I'll come to it a bit later. I'll. It's actually a fun exercise to discover it for yourself. What this identity is. So maybe how about I tell you how to discover it, okay? All right. So what about the generating 
functions. So this plus or minus 1 mod 5, so I'm only using numbers that are 1, 4, 6, 9, and so on to form my partitions. So the generating function here is this infinite product. Yeah. What's that? Clever, like a, the difficulty proof was like a clever trick, or um, at what level of difficulty are we? Uh, That's a great question. So, the proofs are elementary, but no proof will tell you why exactly these work. Mm -hmm. Okay. The proofs I, um, I can tell you a proof at the discussion thing. It's basically a verification proof. So there are some properties of the generating function that you get from this side. <gasps> And you try to prove those properties from this side generating function. Okay? So it's sort of a uniqueness thing that there is only one sequence of generating functions that satisfy those properties. So there is okay. something like this. Okay? All right? Okay. So this generating function is easy to find. It's all numbers congruent to plus or minus 1 mod 5. Right? So that's called a product side for obvious reasons. Let's try to figure out the generating function for the left-hand side. Okay. Good question. Again, there is a there is a proof uh, by by. The, uh, it's called uh, Garcia Milner bijection. The paper is 50 pages long, and most of the effort is spent in proving that it is actually a bijection. It is difficult. Um, yeah. I have never read this paper, but experts tell me that this is, yeah, it's very difficult. Okay, so let's try to figure out a generating function for this, and it has a very peculiar form, which is called the Nam sum. Okay. Okay. So what what do we do with this? So take a partition that satisfies the difference to condition. Take any partition. Let's fix a length. Let's take a length four partition and draw its Ferrell's diagram and it satisfies the condition. Now, what you do is remove two from here, four from here, and six from here. Okay? This is a staircase. Remove it. And by definition, you should get an honest partition of a different integer but of the same length. Okay, does that make sense? An honest partition of a different integer, but of the same length. The fact that it's an honest partition is precisely the statement that your difference is at least two at every step. Okay. We looked at generating function, so R R partitions of length four are in bijection with just honest partitions of length four. Uh, forget this word. It's just partitions that I define. Okay. Sometimes what happens is, if you look at, okay, let's look at. Okay. Here, if I re try to remove two and four from here, I'll get a minus two. Right? Because there are two holes here. Those are called jagged partitions. So that's something else. So honest partition means a partition. That's it. Okay. Start from bottom to top. Don't do anything at the bottom. This, this is a Rogers Ramanujan partition. So adjacent parts must differ by two. So look at the collection of all Rogers Ramanujan partitions, but they have they should have length four. So there should be some partition for every integer. You can write hundred as one plus three plus six plus whatever is remaining. Right? So there is a lot of partitions here of length four. From each of them, remove two, four, six, and you get something like this. Yeah. There is nothing specific about this length. If you had a length 5 partition, you would go doing the same thing. You will remove 2, 4, 6, and 8. Yeah? It's called removing a staircase. Okay. We looked at what is the generating function of partitions that have length at most 4. 
subtract from that the generating function of partitions that have length at most 3, you get the generating function for partitions with length exactly 4, it is this. Okay, I leave that exercise to you and I will keep a variable that x will tell me, the exponent of x will tell me that okay, I am looking at exactly 4 parts here. Okay, so, this is the generating function for partitions of length 4 and now let us put back the staircase. So, what do I add 2 plus 4 plus 6? And this is the generating function for Rogers Ramanujan partitions of length 4. Okay. Okay. So, in the generating function that we wrote down at the very beginning, Q keeps track of the number being partitioned. So, if I want to look at how many partitions there are of 50, I look at the coefficient of Q to the 50. If I want to look at how many partitions there are of 50 of length 4, I will also introduce another variable to keep track of that. Okay. So, it is sort of a bi-graded thing. So, it is denominator where yeah. finite or just if you an infinite product? This is a finite product because it is length 4 for now. So length four, yeah. okay. But there is nothing specific about the length. You can do it for any length whatsoever. Okay and you get this, you put back the staircase and you will be adding 2, 4, however many appropriate number of times, L minus 1 times 2 or something. And then you sum it over all possible lengths. Yeah, because there is no restriction on length in the Rogers Ramanujan identity, you can have any length partition. Okay. Now you just figure out what this is, this is just arithmetic progression, and you will get this is the generating function for the left hand side. I am leaving many details, but you can figure it out on your own. And now we do not care about how many parts there are, so we just set x equal to 1 and this is the generating function for the difference conditions. Okay. All right, let us introduce the notation. This is called a, this is an example of a Nam sum. I okay. will define them maybe next time. All right, so let us introduce a notation okay, everything is formal this is 1 minus z something like this you can put t equal to infinity in which case this is an infinite product with that the Rogers Ramanujan identities become Um, so, this is a purely generating function form of the Rogers Ramanujan identities. Okay. So, this is called uh, analytic sum side, it is a sum, this is called a product side. everything is formal. Okay. How do I, I keep saying there is another one, how do I discover it? So, search for the other one. Huh? There is a pair, Rajas Ramanujan is a pair of identities, I have told you one of them. Okay. How do I find the other one? Huh? Yeah, you could Google, that is fine by me. It is not an exam. So, look for a positive integer c such that 
look for a positive integer c such that this factorizes as an infinite product. Okay. Fire up your computer, look for c equal to 0, 1, 2, 3. For 0, you will get the Rogers from Anujan and you can tell me what you get. Okay. You can now you have learned how to interpret infinite products, figure out what that product means. Here, reverse engineer the staircase method and figure out what are the difference conditions. They will be very similar to the Rogers Ramanujan one, but there will be one extra condition. It's a very tiny little extra condition figure it out what it is. Okay? I can give you the answer at the end of the day. Right? So, it is a pair of identities. Any questions up to this point? Okay. Okay. So, what? Turns out there are… Did yeah. Nam discover that that, that expression? No, no, no. This is well known. In fact, because, uh, right, so this is probably not, this one is not called an Amsum, but what I am going to talk about next time is, um, what you can do is, you can put many, this is called a po Pokhammer symbol, you can put many of them here and you can put a quadratic form up here. And Nam was uh, working with these, because they come up in conformal field theory and the, so this turns out, this is modular, this product. And what he was working on is, can you predict when such a thing is modular? That's the Nam conjecture. Okay. So when Ramanujan discovered it, he discovered it in this form. The partition interpretation is, I think, by MacMahon. Okay. All right. So what? Are there others of this kind? Okay. Yes, there are. So, we looked at mod 5. If you want to look at odd moduli, so remember this had mod 5 in it on the product side. So, k bigger than equal to 1. So, for mod 3, you get uh, easy identity. So, forget about that. You just get 1 equal to 1. And on the sum side, instead of adjacent parts differing by 2, you stipulate that parts at a distance differ by 2. Okay? So, instead of saying, oh, adjacent parts have to differ by 2, you say parts which differ by 2 plus signs in the middle have to differ by at least 2. Okay? Uh, yeah, so these are the product side conditions. I'm not telling you what they are, just trying to give you a flavor. And on the sum side, the tweak is that instead of adjacent parts, you just have parts at a distance. Okay, there is also something for even moduli. These are called Andrews Brasu. Um, but the sum side conditions are somewhat there is one more complication that comes in. Okay? So, again, I will not tell you what they are. It is it's very easy to figure, find out what these are. And one great tool for research is OEIS in this field. Anyone knows what this is? No. It is online encyclopedia of integer sequences. Put a sequence, it will tell you does it correspond to something. Great tool for experimental mathematics. Don't just search for OEIS because it's some syndrome, so you'll get some scary pictures. It's OEIS.org, I think. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll not tell you what these are, but there are many, many identities. It's a fun little project to look up as many as you can. Okay, so before I lose the audience, I'm going to start talking about 
um, where these identities come up. Okay. So I want to concentrate on representation theory, um, but to get you interested, someone can teach me what these words mean. colored for t to phi is the second Rogers Ramanujan identity. So, it is a Q series. Okay. The Q series is the second Rogers Ramanujan identity times this infinite product. Okay. And I have been told that there are many names associated to it. So, okay, Rogers Ramanujan identities have two sides, okay, and whenever they come up, at least in my experience in representation theory, the mechanisms by which the two sides come up is completely different. So, I expect that something similar happens in knot theory that, so it turns out you can prove these identities completely using knot theory, I guess, and I am assuming that the two sides come up by two different mechanisms. So, these are some names associated to this. Um, and I believe if you make this 5 into odd numbers, then you get Gordon Andrews identities, right. I do not know if you ever get the Andrews pursue identities, which are the even modulus generalizations of these guys, all right. Just for one yeah, this is just for one knot. You get the second Rogers Ramanujan. Okay. Yeah, it's the infinite product. So remember, Rogers Ramanujan two was this product. And by multiplying by QQ infinity, you're sort of filling in the gaps here, and it's going above. Okay. Yeah. So, huh? Yeah. So, so we see one side of the identity, you're saying. Yeah. So I was just trying to tell what what is the Q series you get. The Q series equals this, yeah. this times that. But of course, there is the sum side, and you should be able to do two different mechanisms on the not theory side to equate the two. That's what. No, no, I think these they, they proved it, I guess. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Proved, they uh, proved it. They, 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 they computed colored zones in two different ways and got the yeah. right. So, but when you write RR2, what do you mean? Which sum do you mean by RR2? Huh, so, this is the identity I did not write down. Oh, that's right. So, there is a, but, but it is an identity number. You are just saying, yeah, so it's this, one of the sides. Yeah, this is the product side. Ah. Okay, so let me give you the answer. The other side is, is this. And then this is the equality I believe they proved in using not theory. Okay. And then you say that is equal, R R2 is one of the sides of it. Uh, of it. Yeah, so by R R2 you mean the R R2 I mean the f the fact that this equals that. Yeah, but yeah. then when there you are just saying the L H S are the equal. Right. So tail is equal it doesn't matter because as Q series they are equal, right? So I'm just saying that the tail equals this Q series, and they did two different mechanisms to prove that you can get both forms of this Q series. Okay. There was one more application that I was going to tell, where this is uh, related to some Kohanov homology of, again, these are all in inverted commas because I don't understand these words, of some stable Kohanov homology of torus knots, okay. but I am not going to talk about that in the interest the of time. The yeah. the denominator is again finite. No, no, infinite, infinite, everything is infinite, but here it is finite. Yeah. In every sum end it is finite, this is dot, dot, dot. This should be all, all numbers that leave remainder 1 or 4 mod 5, so 1, 4, 6, 9, 11, 14. 
Yes. So, uh, I do not know what happens if you change this to 3, but 2 and odd you get, you get, okay. So, for Gordon and, okay, Rogers Ramanujan at modulus 5 you had 2 identities. At mod 7, there are 3 identities which are Gordon Andrews. At mod 9, there are 4 identities and you get one of them if you change this 5 to an odd number. Just like here you got the second Rogers Ramanujan, you get one of the set in each modulus. Okay. So, I, again I do not know where the first Rogers Ramanujan identity is. 2, 3 does not come because it is not. Huh, 2, small. 3 is, it should be something trivial because Huh, so, if you put k equal to 0 here, okay. then the Gordon Andrews identity and it degenerates gives you 1 equal to 1. Okay, so, maybe something trivial happens for torus not 2, 3, I do not know, which is trefoil, right? Trefoil. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let me tell you why I care about it and I will talk about tensor categories. All right, so. I look at uh, what I call as vertex operator algebras, does not matter what it means. These are infinite dimensional algebras. They do not have to start at 0, but anyway, right now I am not even giving a definition, so I am allowed to do whatever I want, okay. These pieces are all finite dimensional and their modules are also infinite dimensional, but they have a little bit of a weird grading, okay. And, okay, so it is these are graded by positive integers, let us say natural numbers, but these are typically graded by cosets of complex numbers and they are lower truncated, okay. So, this sum does not actually go over all integers, it stops at some negative number depending on the module, okay. Anyway, the thing to do is to look at its Q character, right. How do you count how big is an infinite dimensional space? make a generating function out of it. Okay. So, you just make a generating function out of it. Um, since this is an infinite dimensional space, what I would do is I would make a generating function out of the dimensions of its finite dimensional spaces. If I just add up the dimensions, I will get infinite, so no information, okay. So, Q is a formal variable. Again, this is not exactly precise. There is more things you need to tack on here, but right now I am forgetting that, okay. And what happens is these Q series, or rather let me put it this way, Rogers, Ramanujan type identities show up as characters, okay. So, again the philosophy is that you have to count the character in two different ways. There are some character formulas, namely if you are looking at VOAs coming from affine Lie algebras, there are some very nice character formulas called Wildcats character formula. They end up give you, giving you the product side, but then you have to do a completely different mechanism, namely you have to build these Poincare Birkhoff width type bases to get the other side of the identity. So, two completely different mechanisms and typically what happens is one of the sides is very easy. You can do it on a computer within a second. You just press a button, tell it which VOA, what and it will tell you what is one of the sides of the identity. For the other one, you have to work very hard, okay. All right. 
Now, so far I have been looking at these as formal Q series, so Q is formal, but no one is stopping you from exploring what happens if you put Q is 2 pi i tau, where tau is in the upper half plane, and so Q is in the unit disk, but if tau goes to i infinity, then Q goes to 0. And turns out that okay, so I'm gonna introduce a few words, but then I'll tell you something nice. If this VOAV is what is called rational, this comes from rational conformal field theory, which means that its representation category is semi simple with finitely many isomorphism classes of irreducible representations and uh, there is some condition which makes these characters converge on the upper half plane then these characters end up giving you weight 0 modular forms I will define this next time for some finite index subgroup of SL2Z. Okay. So, if you are working with a nice VOA, you do not just get formal series, they converge and well that is convergence is one of the conditions, but then you end up getting modular forms. These nice VOAs lead to tensor categories which are called as modular tensor categories. Let us call this category C. This ends up being a modular tensor category. Look at the book of Turaev. What this is that it is a finite semi simple. Finite means that there are finitely many isomorphism classes of irreducibles. Every object has a finite length. So, finite semi simple category. This is ribbon. You know what ribbon means now. But more importantly, the S matrix is invertible. What is the S matrix? The S matrix is you look at any two objects and you look at the Hopf link, so you look at the trace of this, okay. take i and j to be simple objects in this category, oh uh, sorry, look at the double braiding and take the trace, okay. so you get a matrix, let us call it S Hopf and it is IJS entry is this. So, you color it with one irreducible, you color it with another irreducible, so you get a matrix. There are only finitely many simples, so this is a finite matrix. This is invertible. Okay. So, a semi simple ribbon category, finite semi simple ribbon category, whose S matrix is invertible, it is called a modular tensor category. So, this is a completely categorical thing, right. This is you look at the braiding um, and you look at its trace, it is a completely categorical thing, but turns out that for these VOAs, this is proportional. with a constant depending on the category itself and the VOA of course. So, I should be precise. 
to the matrix you get out of the modular transformation properties of these Q series. Okay. So, what do I mean by that? So, you look at one module, in that you do the S transformation, I will tell you what it is next time. So, tau goes to, well tau goes to minus 1 over tau, so Q goes to a to the minus 2 pi i over tau. So, take a character of one of the irreducibles m i, you do this S transformation, again there is something else that you have to do, but forget about it. Turns out it can be written as a combination of the other characters. Okay. So, the modular transformation properties of these Q series actually tell you categorical information. Okay. All right. So, that is why the categorical information is very important. Now, why do you call these modular tensor categories? So, we have this is a very suggestive thing S. So, this modular group is generated by two matrices. Okay. And turns out that this S matrix is Hopf and there is a categorical T matrix that is given by the ribbon twists. So, you just make a matrix on the diagonals you put, put the twist of the simple object and of diagonal entries you do not put anything. These maybe let us put categorical, so let us put C it is gotten by the categories. So, S going to S hop and the T going to this categorical T gives a projective representation of S L 2 C. Okay. And turns out you can even get representations of mapping class groups of closed oriented two manifolds, but do not ask me how that works, I have no idea. I can tell you a reference though. The reference is Turaev's book or there is another one by Bakalov and Kirillov. Okay. okay, let us. Yeah. So, these uh, what I am saying is that. Right. So, this is a trace. So, it gives a morphism from unit to unit which is a scalar. So, forget the repre I mean. So, it is only thing I am trying to say here is that these this S matrix which is now a sc scalar S matrix because yeah. I have uh, and this is already a scalar because this is a twist. So, again these satisfy the same relations as this S and T, but up to a constant. Okay. So, there is relations like uh, S T cubed is S squared and this matrix and that matrix will almost satisfy that, but you will not get exactly the relation you will get it up to constants. All right, so let us come back to some concrete things. All right. So, what are these? What is happening with regards to asymptotics? There is a VOA built out of a Virasoro algebra, it is again parameterized by these two curious numbers 2 phi. It has two modules, this is a unit in the tensor category and it has only one other irreducible module, let us call it phi. You will see in a moment why I am calling it phi. 
this is rational, everything works out, you get a modular tensor category of it and what I want to do is a one dimensional representation, in other words a character of the tensor ring, it is also called the growth in Dick ring. So, meaning for every module I want to assign a number, so modules are just direct sums of these guys, I want to assign a number, let us say z such that or I should say, I do not want to put here what I am, okay. it is really the growth indie group, but for every mo module I want to assign a number z such that rho of x direct sum y is rho of x plus rho of y and rho of x tensor y is rho x rho y and this number should be positive uh, for simples. Rho of s is greater than or rho of m is greater than 0 for m irreducible. Okay. So, let us practice. Let me tell you what the tensoring here is. One is a unit, so it's that it is commutative, so it doesn't matter because when you pass to the growth in Dick ring, there is braiding, but braiding doesn't matter when you pass to this tensor ring, and this breaks up as that. Okay, that's the complete tensor um, rules. So, what should I assign one? One. Should I assign phi? You want to take a moment? What should happen is let us say I assign a number z to phi, z square is 1 plus z. I want my solution to be positive, what are the solutions? Okay. Minus b plus or minus b square minus 4 a c. So, the only positive root I get is which is the golden ratio, right? which is why I called it phi. What does this have to do with Rogers Ramanujan? Turns out that there is a theorem which rests on this modular tensor category business, which is a deep theorem. It, um, this row can be obtained in the following way. So, rho of m in this case, otherwise you need a few more conditions, but in this case it works out like this. You look at the character of m divide by the character of your tensor unit and take the limit as q goes to 1. So, you see asymptotics coming into play, we are looking at limits as q approaches something, okay. still no Rogers Ramanujan. What is the Rogers Ramanujan here? Character of 1, the q character is precisely the second Rogers Ramanujan q series, the character of m, uh, sorry character of phi precisely the first Rogers Ramanujan identity. So, if you divide the two, take the limit, uh, yeah this is correct, take the limit as q goes to 1, you should get a golden ratio. Okay. So, 
fact, which you can prove independently without any of this machinery, it is a very quick proof in fact. So, this fact that Rogers Ramanujan 1 divided by Rogers Ramanujan 2 as q goes to infinity, as q goes to 1 precisely the golden ratio. Okay. You will see this golden ratio again in the next Uh, uh, in tomorrow when I talk about dialogue categories. Okay. Do you want to name this category? This category has a name. Categories that have this uh, tensor structure have a name. Any guess what it is? Starts with F. They are called Fibonacci categories. Anyway. All right. So, again before I lose people, uh, in the last couple of minutes, let me just tell you what I was saying about this uh, other types of identities or would you like to know about the Kovanov, maybe let me talk about the Kovanov thing because I do not understand it. So, someone can explain it to me. So, what happens is this, take this, this is the conjectures of Gorsky, Oblomkov and Rasmussen. I do not know if they have been proved someone can teach me. So, look at this algebra generated by infinitely many variables. Okay. Everything is commutative, associative. Okay. Right. Now, look at the following sequence of elements. I am calling it 2 because it is x 1 times x 1. So, the weight is sort of 2. It is a quadratic R 3. I am writing it in a stupid way so that you can understand the pattern. Everything is commutative. So, you could write it as 2 times x 1 x 2. Yeah, You see the pattern? You take a quadratic, look at all the numbers that add up to 4, take the quadratics and add them together. Okay? Make this list of elements generate an ideal out of these in this algebra. Let us name this algebra it's A, call this ideal I, and take a quotient. This is commutative. Yeah, I just wanted to show you the pattern. You are very welcome to write it like this. Just wanted to show you the pattern. I am adding up all the numbers. I do not understand if someone writes uh, just what is going on right. and I might have made an error. Anyway, this is the formula. Right. So, I just wanted to write it so that it is easily understandable. It is commutative, associative, everything is good. Take the quotient. Okay. This has a basis uh, enumerated by monomials satisfying the uh, the difference to condition that we saw. Why? prove that it is a basis is hard. You can easily convince yourself that it spans. Take any monomial, okay. if it has two ones, meaning it has x 1 squared, that is already killed in our ideal. So, you are not allowed to have two adjacent ones okay, in the partition. If you have 1 and 2 together, use this relation to kill it off in this ideal. So, you are not allowed to have difference 1 as 1 plus 2. If you have two twos appearing, you can break off the, you can break it off by substituting it with x 1, x 3. So, you are increasing the distance. You see what is happening? So, when you quotient by this ideal, you are sort of forbidding all the monomials that have either a variable repeating which corresponds to a part repeating or two very nearby variables appearing. So, x 1, x 2 is not allowed. 
somewhere x3, x4 will be not allowed. That would be a part of R7, right? You can do this on a computer, see what you get. So it's easy to. Uh, right, so the, ele the elements that survive are precisely the ones that satisfy the difference two conditions. Some, so something like x1, x3, x6, x8 will survive. It depends on how you eliminate the variable. So you have to put an ordering and so on, but things like this will end up giving you a basis of this space. It's easy to convince you that it's spanning. To prove that it's a basis requires more work. OK. Now, in commutative algebra, there is a construction called Kozul complex. Forget the words. What it means is the following. You have a bunch of polynomials, and you want to figure out what are the relations between those polynomials. OK? It's a basic thing. For example, if I multiply this polynomial by x1, and I multiply this one by 2x2, I get that these two are the same. So this Kozul complex is precisely designed to capture or to figure out what sort of relations exist. And this conjecture of gorsky oblomkov rasmussen is that this Kozul complex is in some sense related. Someone can tell me what is the relation to the stable Kovanov homology of torus knots. I do not know if this has been proved. But now, on the algebraic side, there are many results on just what this space is, what this thing is. Um, so yeah, so next time I'll talk about asymptotics. And this was an overview, so I'm, I apologize if I was very sketchy at times, but next time I'll be very precise, at, at least more than what I was doing. Right, so uh, so here what happens is the following. When you do the representation theory of Virasoro, on the nose you get these characters as the products. You have to then go on and build the bases to figure out the sum sides for the characters, meaning you then have to work hard to actually figure out, oh, these, just like what we did here, to figure out what are the sort of monomials that are counted in the sum side. But this is an abstract theorem. No matter how you come up with this character, this should limit, this limit should be square root 5 plus 1 divided by 2. Which one? The very first one? Yeah, that was just a, that was just how you form this Q series. But then you can actually calculate the coefficients in that Q series using many different methods. One is by using character formulas. One is by explicitly building bases. But this theorem just tells you it doesn't matter what. To actually calculate what it is, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But in general, it's hard to calculate even, even the product <coughs> side for a random VOA. You need, yeah, it's non-trivial, but. Uh, in general, it, the, in general, the modular, the one of the two sides is manifestly modular. That is the one you get on the nose, typically. So in the Rogers Ramanujan, it's the product side that's manifestly modular, and that's usually the case. Mo the product side is the manifestly modular one. That is the one you get on the nose. But it doesn't matter at the end how you calculate this limit. It's a really cool exercise to do this 
by taking the sum sides for both the Rogers Ramanujan identities and try to figure out what the limit is, you get this. And to take both of these as products and then figure out what this limit is. Okay? Two completely different mechanisms will give you this same limit. 